totally knows what he's talking about. By Andrew Harnick, AP, Rex, Shuttershock. On Monday afternoon, the Congressional Budget Office released an alarming report estimating that the U.S. deficit will top $1 trillion annually beginning in 2020, with the national debt surpassing $33 trillion by 2028. According to Budget Director Keith Hall, the sharp rise in debt will have serious negative consequences for the budget and the nation. In particular, Hall warned the likelihood of a fiscal crisis in the United States would increase thanks to the strong probability that rising deficits will bump up interest rates, increase borrowing costs in the private sector, slam stock prices, and slow down the economy, which would in turn increase the deficit even more. And who do we have to thank for this pants-pissingly terrifying situation? Per the nonpartisan CBO, the increase stems primarily from tax and spending legislation especially the 2017 Tax Act, the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2018, and the Consolidated Appropriations Act 2018. Which, obviously, is exactly why the bill formerly known as the Cut 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 Act had its fair share of detractors, who warned against the timing of the unnecessary giveaway to corporate America in the idle rich. But while many were scared senseless by the CBO's projections, the report notes that growth from the overhaul will not come close to making up for the damage done by the cuts. One man remains totally unfazed. And that man, of course, is Donald Trump's never-right economics guru, Larry Kudlow. Appearing on CNN last night to explain why everyone should sit back with a stiff martini and relax, the TV pundit turned White House National Economic Council director told Aaron Burnett, the CBO, God bless him, their various lowball economic growth estimates last I looked. We're slightly below 2% growth for the next 10 years. We don't believe that. Our view is lower tax rates, particularly business, create incentives to invest in work ethic and pick up productivity and wages. I would take a somewhat larger deficit in order to finance long-term growth in the economy. In other words, screw the deficit. Long live tax cuts. I refuse to believe any math that Steven Mnuchin hasn't pulled out of his ass. Which, of course, is what you would probably expect a man who has spent his entire life insisting supply-side economics works, to say. But then Burnett pulled out a clip showing Kudlow in 2009 absolutely railing against deficits under Barack Obama. The families of America take a look at this budget and these humongous deficits and the doubling of the debt and so forth and the out-of-control spending. Kudlow moaned at the time. This is like completely out of a line. This is the most unbalanced fiscal story coming out of Washington, really, in our history. And while a lesser man might have said, well, Aaron, it looks like you got me. I'll admit it, I'd only care about so-called fiscal responsibility when Democrats are in power and tax cuts aren't on the line. Larry Kudlow is no such man. Instead, he told Burnett the trouble I had with the Obama program was it was all spending. It was all spending and most of it was not a spending for infrastructure. Most of it was spending for welfare programs and social spending. That's not a growth prescription, it's just spending. Which is another way of saying that spending, when it's the kind that will line Trump's buddy's pockets, is fine. But spending so the poor and elderly can get medication? Well, that's just ridiculous. As for Kudlow's position that he'll take the lower tax rates, particularly in business, to create incentives to invest in work ethic and pick up productivity and wages, let's take a look at what businesses have done with their windfalls so far. HTTPS colon slash slash Twitter dot com slash Ian Shepardson slash status slash nine eight three six five three five one eight six eight one seven eight eight four one six HTTPS colon slash slash Twitter dot com slash Trevor Noren slash status slash nine eight one five Nine five one three four one three zero three seven six seven zero four, all of which suggests that K. Lo, whose request for his own press secretary was recently rebuffed, has issued a personal challenge to himself to be wrong about virtually everything that comes out of his mouth, and not just when it comes to taxes or trade or recessions or whether or not double-breasted suits and contrasting white collars are still in style, but about literally everything. https colon slash slash twitter dot com slash peter baker net slash status slash nine eight three seven zero seven eight nine five seven one zero eight six three three six one. Anyway, we're sure that with Larry's sage advice, such as his assertion that the president should bypass Congress to issue even more tax cuts, Trump is well on his way to keeping that campaign promise to completely eliminate the national debt. After all, when these two put their sparsely covered heads together, what can't they accomplish? If you would like to receive the Levin Report in your inbox daily, click here to subscribe.
Robert Mercer will have to find a new way to skirt concealed carry loss last month. We learned that Robert Mercer, the Breitbart backing Cambridge Analytica funding, President Trump foisting hedge fund billionaire had found a clever way around the rule that says one cannot carry a concealed weapon in Suffolk County, New York, where he lives. By spending six days a year interning with a local police force in Lake Arthur, New Mexico, Mercer was able to take advantage of a 2004 law allowing any police officer, even those off-duty and out of their jurisdiction, and even those who were technically just volunteers, to carry a concealed weapon in any state they wanted. But on Tuesday, some sad news came across the wire. If the idea of a person like Mercer no longer being able to carry a gun makes you sad, his nifty workaround is no longer the tiny New Mexico town that handed out police badges to dozens of out-of-towners, including New York hedge fund manager Robert Mercer, is stopping the practice. Lake Arthur Mayor Isidro Salazar said he shut the town's volunteer reserve officer program last week and is asking current reserve officers to hand in their credentials, which allowed them to carry concealed weapons in every U.S. State. The mayor put Chief William Norwood, who ran the program and served as Lake Arthur's sole full-time paid police officer, on administrative leave. His status will be discussed at a town council meeting on Thursday, Salazar said. Norwood didn't respond to requests for comment. In a statement, Salazar told Bloomberg that, because of the notoriety this was bringing, I decided to go ahead and disassemble the unit, adding that the program got a little bit too big. And a lot of the reserves kind of took advantage of that fact. Blood testing sham Theranos lays off most of its few remaining workers. That tends to happen after your founder settles civil charges with. The SEC relinquishes her voting control, is ordered to pay a $500,000 penalty, and is barred from being an officer or a director in a public company for the next 10 years. The layoffs take the company's headcount from about 125 employees to two dozen or fewer, according to people familiar with the matter. As recently as late 2015, Theranos had about 800 employees. The latest round of layoffs is the company's third since the Wall Street Journal revealed in October 2015 that it was misleading investors and the public about the state of its technology. At the time, Theranos was using its proprietary blood testing devices for only a fraction of the nearly 250 tests it offered consumers in Walgreens stores and was performing the rest on commercial analyzers, the journal revealed. This belied Ms. Holmes's claims that she had invented groundbreaking new technology that enabled Theranos to run the full range of laboratory tests from just a drop or two of blood pricked from a patient's finger. Theranos, which has neither admitted nor denied wrongdoing, did not respond to the journal's request for comment. Of course Scott Pruitt fired a staffer who OK, DA report making him look bad nothing to see here, just business as usual at the department of the 5 to 1 favorite for most corrupt Trump official 2018, EPA. Removed a career staffer Tuesday who approved an internal report that undermined Administrator Scott Pruitt's claims that he needed around-the-clock bodyguards and other expensive security protection, according to two former agency employees familiar with the situation. Mario Caraballo was the Deputy Associate Administrator of EPA's Office of Homeland Security, which in February concluded that an earlier assessment failed to identify credible direct threats against the administrator that would justify his heavy security spending. If the EPA thought that the ousting, which the agency said in a statement was based on a recommendation by the Office of Administration and Resources Management, was going to send a chilling message to any staffers thinking of going rogue, it apparently thought wrong. This isn't going to frighten staff, this is going to embolden us to leak more to get these criminals out, an employee told Politico. They need to know we're not intimidated and we're going to blow the whistle on anything even borderline questionable. Elsewhere, Mark Zuckerberg's regulatory nightmares, ranked the hive the Great Blackstone Swaps saga just became a whole lot crazier. Bloomberg, m and won't be a public company after shortcut IPO plans collapse. Money beat, Venezuela is in default, but Goldman Sachs just got paid, WSJ, the bottomless irony of Michael Cohen's tweets, Washington Post Dutch Bank's new CEO, a risk veteran, warns of tough decisions, WSJ, Moz and Financial to raise $9 billion, become biggest unicorn, WSJ, Pharma Bro, fraudster Martin Shkreli ordered to pay $388,000 in restitution to swindled investor, CNBC, Bitcoin, the biggest bubble in history, is popping, Bloomberg, Taylor Swift fan robs a bank, throws money over her fence to prove his love for pop star NYDN.